So now you're ready to lock your flooring together. You got your wedge taped to your baseboard. You think that's gonna hold it? Nope. Dude, that was three days of hard work. Yeah. But look how amazing it looks. Hey gang, I'm Paul with Stepback. Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, you saw Jordan and I grout this backsplash, put up some LED lights. All that stuff came out great. We loved the way it looked. But you know what, gang? These are all small details. I'm kind of tired of working on small details. I want to do something huge. I want to make some big progress. What's that going to be? Finally, these floors, guys. We've been waiting forever for the floors. Let me take you back to when we first started this project and fill you in on what we had. Now, over here in the foyer, this was the original glued down oak parquet flooring. In this area right here, in the old dining room, it was carpet. That came out super quick. Over here in the kitchen and the laundry, it was a Saltillo tile. And over here in the living room, it was a glue down oak strip flooring. Now the original plan was to leave the oak strip flooring in the living room, find a similar modern flooring to match. So we'd have a transition strip right here under our beam and right across here under this beam. But after we opened all this up, the owner said, you know what? I think it would look a lot better if we ripped out the oak strip flooring in the living room and had one product across the whole thing, and we agreed, we said super. So we ripped out this strip flooring, it came up pretty easily. We had a couple spots where they were glued down with like an epoxy, and we did end up renting a floor machine with carbide teeth to help us get the glue up. But this has been concrete like this for weeks, and we are ready to put some floor down. So let's talk about the flooring that we bought. Way back in April, we decided on the color and the manufacture of the flooring that we wanted. They said it'd be about 12 weeks out, and we said, that's a little longer than we want, but we can wait. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we get an email saying, actually the delivery date is gonna be end of September. Well, we're not gonna wait that long. So we went back to the showroom. We picked out a different color of the exact same product. This is our new flooring right here. It's gonna look amazing once we put it down and it doesn't need a vapor barrier or a padding. Padding's built right in, so that's gonna be a lot easier for us. But before we can lay that on the floor, we gotta rip up that old oak flooring in the hallway. Let's get it done. All right, guys, we get a lot of comments that say, hey, stud pack, how come you can't save that beautiful oak strip flooring? Whether it's this glued down stuff we pulled out of this house or some stuff that was nailed down in a previous demolition we did. I guess if you had the means and the time, you could scrape all this glue off and reuse it. But we lost about a third of the product when it split when we pulled it up. But you could, if you had the means and the time, like I said, scrape that off, put it back down on some wood or some concrete, get the sander out and refinish it. But look at your wear layer. It's pretty thin. You yeah. might have one sanding left. So it's all up to you, gang. For us, it's simply not worth it. In the trash. Let's go finish that floor. flooring is done in the trash can. We scraped all the glue off. It looks great. You see how clean it is? We swept everything off the walls, vacuumed the base, opened these doors, vacuumed in the bedrooms. We are ready to go. And what I'm looking for, it needs to be smooth, gang. You can have all that glue up. You can see the ridges, but it's pretty smooth right here. And on a difficulty scale, on a zero to 10, I'd give that a solid two. 
And we gauge that on how much energy we have after we finish ripping out floor. I got so much energy, I can start putting in this floor right now. But actually we can't gang, there's one more step we gotta do. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Way back in the demo stage, we used that same pneumatic scraper to remove the original 1981 parquet flooring from this concrete slab, which was glued down to the concrete. And as you can see, this looks like the surface of the moon. It's got all these craters in it. Well, the glue from the parquet actually pulled that concrete up. The pneumatic scraper didn't damage the concrete. That glue pulled it up. Pretty amazing. So we need to fill that in. We need a nice smooth surface here, just as we mentioned before, for that vinyl flooring. So I'm basically gonna mix up some thin set and we're gonna skim coat this whole thing. I got my cement trial here ready to go. And while we're doing it, we're gonna come over here. We have a few areas where these walls, remember there used to be walls here. They were fastened to the concrete. Well, the concrete spalled out when we pulled those nails out. So we gotta fix that. This is a perfect example right here. If I don't fix that and put that six millimeter vinyl across there, the leg of this stool could just punch right through it. And we certainly don't want that to happen. So we're gonna do this whole section right here where these walls were, check the whole floor, make it smooth, ready for flooring. So let's head outside and mix up some thin set. It's all done, well worth the expense of a $15 bag of thin set. We're not gonna have any punctures in our flooring ever. We got a nice, smooth, flat floor with no voids in it. We're gonna let that set up overnight, come back tomorrow, hit this floor hard, get it done, we'll see you then. Hey gang, it's the next day. That thin set we used yesterday to fill in the voids and the holes in this concrete slab has all dried. That was the perfect solution for this problem. And before I went outside to clean the bucket, I had a little bit left and I realized I might have a couple spots in this slab where I have a dip. If you remember from the demo video in this living room where we scraped up this oak strip flooring, and then in the beginning of this video where we scraped up the hall flooring, we had a few spots where there was a different adhesive. What I imagine happened was that the original adhesive bond broke here and over there, and there was some springiness in the floor since it wasn't glued down anymore. So they came back with a different adhesive, that sticky stuff, injected it under the floor, to reattach it with some adhesive. So I got my Festool straight edge, put it across the slab on edge, and sure enough, I had a low spot here and a couple by that bathroom. So I just got the rest of the thin set, filled it in, used the straight edge to double check it, and it worked out great. I did go around the whole slab, and it's within spec. What is the spec? Well, this little sheet comes with each box of flooring, and the spec is right here, 3 16 and 10 feet. So I'm well within that. And then if you look right here, vapor barrier, it's not required. And of course, a pad is not required either because it's already on the product. So we're getting close to putting this floor down, but there's one more thing I wanna do. I wanna give it a light scraping. We've got some drywall compound, who knows what else on here. So I'm just gonna have Jordan go over the slab. See all that stuff coming up. We're gonna get all that up, make it perfect. Let's move this furniture and prep this slab.
Alrighty, gang, that floor is clean. And I'd venture to say we could eat our lunch off that floor. What do you say, Jordan? You, you wanna put our turkey chili right on there and eat it off the floor? You know, that sounds really good. You could make a strong argument that this floor is now cleaner than that table. Yep, and you may be asking us, why are you going to all this trouble? Yes, you want it flat. Yes, you want it smooth. But do you really need to scrape it and vacuum it? If you've ever laid down any kind of laminate flooring or vinyl tile flooring that clicks together, you know that this joint is machined and it's gotta be perfect. And we had a case where we did a whole floor and we had a little bit of trash get in between two of these pieces. We had seven people working. It wasn't caught until we were done. And it was right in the middle. That's where it happened. Just not gonna happen under a couch or somewhere. It's gonna be where you see it every day. So we wanna minimize that happening to us. So we wanted to vacuum this floor and get every little piece of paper and wire and uh, drywall compound off of this floor so it's smooth. So now that it's smooth, let's talk about one more thing. Now we know, we know, you're like, come on, stud pack, let's start laying some floor. But this is an important step. What I wanna talk about is patterns. Now this is obviously not a wood product, but it looks like wood. What it is, it is simply a picture of wood that is printed on the product. Now, do they have millions of pictures that they use? No, they only have a few. And every manufacturer is a little bit different. Let's check out what these guys did. Now we have two boxes on the floor here. Six here and six there. And at first glance, it might look like all these are different. Now one thing to note, all the tongues are facing the same direction. But let's take a look at these two boards and I'm gonna grab this one and I'm gonna spin it around 180 degrees and place it next to this one. Can you see these two knots right here? Those are exactly the same knot. It's the same part of the same picture as well as this defect right here. Again, it's the same picture. But this manufacturer rotated that photo 180 degrees during the manufacturing process. So it's gonna make it less obvious that there's a pattern. The other thing they did, they shifted it, right? It doesn't line up this way, left or right. The pattern is always different. That's gonna make it a lot easier for us during the installation. We can spend less time looking for a pattern and more time installing the floor. Now we are gonna work out of multiple boxes at a time, just like you do with any other flooring. So let's go grab two more boxes, get them lined up and start putting down some floor. All right, gang, we're starting in the hallway but we started in the hallway for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's the hardest because we got all these doorways to deal with. And in this hallway, it kind of establishes the direction we're gonna run our floor. Yes, it does turn this way into the master, but that's fine. This is our main focal point right here. So the first thing we did, we got three planks, we put three rows together right here, all the way through that hallway door behind Jordan. And then we centered them exactly in the hallway. We then determined that we actually have enough room from the edge of this full one into this doorway and the gap will get covered by this transition strip. So perfect, we don't need a thin strip here. After we determine that, we slid those three planks this way and we cut and scribed this row around all the door frames. So now we're gonna push this whole thing together away from us against that wall. It should fit like a glove. It should, let's, let's do, do it. it. All right. Man, that looks great right there. Of course, you don't wanna see the concrete anywhere around here. Now, of course, this door jam is cut a little bit higher because the original floor was thicker. We're gonna put quarter round or shoe right here. That'll take care of that. And just around here, you're not talking much. It'll be fine also. And just like with a tile floor where you do your layout to avoid small slivers here and here, we have full tile here and in that doorway. Perfect. And the way we got that, like we said just a few minutes ago, we put in these three full planks first and got it centered between this baseboard and this baseboard. The distance between the baseboard and the edge was seven and an eighth, and we want to get that number back. I'm a little strong. I'm like seven and five sixteenths. I actually want to move it this way. I want that eighth back because I want to make sure this transition goes over the tile and over the floor. So let's slide it back this way, get it dialed in, and finish this hallway. All right. All right, the base is cut. Oh, look at that. Dang, I think I just, I think I just ruined that, man. Yep, but you know what? I used the duplicating function on my table saw. Check around the corner of that bathroom door. 
That thing's got a copy button? It does. Wow. Awesome, isn't it? Well, that's good. And I would hate for you to do this all over again because I didn't use a sacrificial board. I got you covered, bud. Appreciate it. All right. But I will be using sacrificial boards okay. from now on. All right. All right, guys, this hallway's been a killer. By a killer, I mean like two hours, but that's okay. We're gonna take our time in here because this hallway is gonna establish the success of the whole house as far as the floor is concerned. Now you saw us fit this piece one, two, three, four rows and slide it underneath the baseboard and the door jams on that side. Once that was done, we had our line here. We measured off of this line to the baseboard into this doorway and around that doorway and we cut and we fit these two pieces right here. Now the challenge is, how are you ever gonna fit those under and lock it in together at the same time? So in order to accomplish that, we took this row out. They come apart very easy. Then we laid this one where it belongs and we pushed this piece in from this direction, locking this piece together and this piece together. It's easier than it sounds. It is. We use some soapy water on a sponge for lubricant and each tap with our stud pack ram, I think we went like half an inch, maybe more, 13 millimeters maybe. Great, great pack. use of the metric system. That's right. So we're gonna show you right now how we do that. All right, gang, we're ready to slide this piece in right here and get out of this hallway. Let's show you how we do it. Got a soapy sponge here. Move up both sides. That's all I need. Now we just gotta get these two aligned, just like that. I'm just started here on the corner. Now Jordan's gonna guide this for me and I'm gonna go to the other end. I'm just gonna tap this in with our block but so that we don't damage that edge. We have the mating piece from a drop right here. We're gonna put that on there and check this out. One more, good one. I'm out of gas, need one more. <laughs> Perfect. Man, look at that. Hey, that's pretty slick. People are gonna be walking in here wondering how we ever did that. Now they know. But we are officially out of this hallway. Woo! Yeah, we got that little L to do, but that's easy, right? So our next plan of attack, now that we got those five rows started in the hallway, we are gonna continue five full rows all the way down, all the way to this far wall. That's gonna establish our baseline, and then we can start working that way towards the street and that way to the backyard. I bet we can do this in half the time it took just to do that hallway. Bud. I think we can floor this whole place in the same amount of time. And we got your brother here to help us. So That's cool. true. Let's get going. Even with all the planning gang, sometimes that's inevitable. No cap. <laughs> wow, that's the easiest piece I put in. It's Cause I cut it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that corner is there to stay. We had a little trouble with it cause it's such a small piece. And I asked Jordan, how are we gonna hold that piece in place? He said, dad, just get the two P10. It'll hold anything. So we put a little bit on the tongue. That thing worked great. So now we've got the five rows of flooring all in from way in the back of the hall right down the gut of the house to that bay window in the kitchen. So now we're ready to start working towards the street. But we got an issue, gang. From previous experience, when we start tapping this this direction to lock those pieces into this section, this is gonna move. We know it is. We've moved whole living rooms full with just a tap of a hammer. And we didn't bring our pet elephant today, so what are we gonna do? How are we gonna keep this in place? Well, you can see right here on the floor, we had some off cuts, we made some little blocks, we put them at each joint right here and we're gonna screw them to the slab and that's gonna prevent it from moving towards the backyard that way. So I've got my Bosch Roto Hammer here, got the Bulldog out. We're gonna drill a 5 16 hole right through the middle of each one into the concrete, put an anchor and a screw. That's gonna lock it down tight and we can start laying this floor. So how do we know that this floor that we already put down is exactly where we want it? Is it parallel to the front of the house? Did it drift right or left as we went from this doorway all the way to the bay window? Well, we got out our laser right here. You can see it on our pole. And we put it all the way down this floor. And basically this seam between this piece and this piece, that beam is splitting that joint. It's also splitting it at the far end. And we lined it up all the way down. We got our blocks here ready to go. So I said we fire up that roto hammer, get this thing fastened, start laying some floor. Let's do it. All right. All right, gang, this is locked down with those blocks. It's not going anywhere. We can tap on that all day long and it's not gonna move, but we are ready to fly 
do this side of the house. So we're gonna throw you in a little bit of a time lapse while we work. We're gonna enjoy some Boston while we rock and roll and you guys are gonna enjoy a little non-copyrighted music. Yeah, the saw is not happy. These surprise rainstorms are killing me. Back in business. All right, guys, we are almost done with this side of the house. I say almost because we couldn't quite finish right here. That surprise thunderstorm got the blade on my saw stop wet. The internal electronics said, you're done for the day. I'm gonna dry out overnight. Maybe I'll work tomorrow. If you've ever installed this flooring, you're halfway through it and you realize, oh man, it's starting to move on me because my joints are opening up. You know how frustrating that is. So try this method. We're gonna go home, shower, get some rest, and we'll be back at it tomorrow. All right, gang, it's the next day. We're showered, we're rested, but you know what? I feel like I've been beat up. I feel like I fought the floor. I know, and this is hard work. I think what does it for me the most is you're up and down a hundred times a day. Just getting down on the floor and getting back up. Getting on the floor, getting back up. Shout out to the floor installers. This is hard right. work, man. It is. So we came in this morning. Man, it looks super, looks fantastic. We love it. For right now, we're gonna pull these blocks up, get all that furniture moved over, and prep that floor for day two. This floor is all prepped, now let's finish this living room. It starts with the first piece on the row. Sometimes the first piece is the drop from the last piece on the previous row, and sometimes you have to measure it to break up the pattern. And the next step is to come over here to our four flooring boxes. We have four open to really randomize things. I like this guy, so we're gonna take it over here and set her down to be put in. I'm gonna set it down first. We're gonna make sure that our pattern is good. It is, so dad and I are gonna put it in. and then I come behind them with the tapping block and make sure the joints are tight. Where'd you find that kid? I don't know, he just wanted to come to work. He was standing on the sidewalk? Yeah, he wanted to, I gave him a free hat and he wanted to come help us work. Awesome. Yeah. And once we put in our last full piece, we're gonna measure for the end piece. So I've got about 12 and a half, so let's come over here and cut it. The beauty about this stuff is, check this out. No saw trips. There you go. <laughs> now we start the same process all over again until we knock it out. Alrighty guys, the living room is done. Looks fantastic. It went a lot quicker today. Remember yesterday we spent a lot of time establishing a perfectly laser straight edge to work off of. We worked that way in the opposite direction from what the manufacturer intends. So today it was much quicker going this direction. And when I say opposite the way the manufacturer recommends, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just how we decided to do it. We got those five rows here like you, like you saw in the video. We went that direction into the front door area, into the dining room area and into the kitchen area. But I'm done. I'm gonna work my way into the hot tub area. We'll catch you tomorrow. Hey gang, welcome back to day three on our flooring installation. We stayed very late last night and we actually did some staging for the homeowners. They're gonna come home in a couple of nights, Sunday night, walk through that back door and instead of seeing concrete with drywall compound and paint all over it, they're gonna see their beautiful new floors 
and the evening's gonna be some furniture in the room. But before we cross the finish line on this flooring, we wanna talk about one of the aspects of the installation that always gives us trouble, and I'm sure it's gonna give you trouble if you've never done this before. So you go to the home center or the flooring center, you pick out your flooring and you buy an installation kit. In the installation kit, there's gonna be knee pads. There's gonna be a Z bar. Does it look like that Z bar has been used? Check that out. There's gonna be a tapping block. Does it look like that's been used? And it's gonna come with some wedges. Do they look like they've been used? Nope, they're still in the package. So what's the purpose of these wedges? Why does it come with the kit? And why do we choose not to use them? Let's head down to the floor and I'll show you why. So on nine out of 10 jobs we do when we put down flooring, there is a gap between the bottom of the baseboard and the slab or the subfloor, just like you see here. So when you put the wedges there and put your flooring against it and put in your next row and tap, boom, that's what the wedges do. They collapse over and if you keep working, they're gonna get jammed in there and they're very difficult to remove and you could even damage your baseboard. The only way these wedges would ever work is if your baseboard is sitting on top of your slab, just like that, or on top of your subfloor, or on top of your existing flooring. And existing flooring, I don't mean carpet. You better not be installing this stuff over carpet. I've seen it. So check this out. We're gonna put the wedges there, put that against it, and then when I tap, it's solid, right? But like I said, we hardly ever see this. That's what we run into, and that's why we choose not to use these. So screw in a block to the subfloor, is our preferred method. And if you've got a wood subfloor, plywood, it's a no-brainer. You've got to try it, guys. Remember that we put our first five planks down and established a perfectly straight course with our laser, locked it down with our blocks. We went this direction towards the street. Not one opening, not one joint came apart. Took the blocks out, finished the floor, came out fantastic. We are moving, we are grooving, we are ready to finish this floor. Let's get our knee pads on and knock it out. Let's do it. going but I'm still so I'm still <laughs> feel like they're a part of me <laughs> they were for three days alrighty gang we are done with this flooring it is finally finished and it came out incredible check this out and this floor had a little bit of everything I think we had to start off by filling in low spots and we had to make sure our layout was perfectly straight all the way down this hallway to that far bay window we worked this way to, towards the front door. We had walls to notch around, thresholds to go under. Went under the dishwasher and the range even. Who does that? And why don't people put flooring under dishwashers? It's crazy. You're only saving like a couple bucks. Yeah, and then it's hard to get out. So then we worked this direction. We had the 45 degree angle over there. The tile that we're gonna put a transition strip on. We went under we, thresholds. We did, over here. Wrapped around that 45 degree corner, into the pantry, into the laundry room. And we had nine boxes left over. We usually have one piece left over. So good job on estimating. And you know what? This house doesn't feel like a construction site anymore. For so long, we've been on concrete floors with all the drywall compound and paint on it. And now it feels so warm, more like a home. 
and it's really changed the way the lighting feels in here. But we're not done yet. Remember, we have this fireplace to finish. That's gonna be epic. We're gonna put a TV in here in this little niche so they can watch TV while they're cooking. And don't forget, over here on this peninsula where we have this stick, we've come up with a solution that you're gonna love. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Get down below, turn on those post notifications so you don't miss it. And while you're down there, put some blocks around your like button so it doesn't move, smash it for us, give us some of your own tips and tricks, ask us some questions, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you on the next one.